Like how an apple under the influence of Earth's gravity falls to the Earth, a photon traveling through empty space close to a massive object like a star or a galaxy appears to be attracted to it. Now, the reason why I use the word appear is because a photon traveling in the vicinity of a massive object, say a star, does not feel any physical force of attraction that pulls it towards the star. Rather, the mass of the star curves the space around it in such a way that a straight line in three-dimensional space isn't straight anymore, but curved ever so slightly towards the star. This was one of the predictions of Einstein's general theory of relativity that was published back in 1915. Soon after the First World War ended in 1919, English astronomer Sir Arthur Eddington set out on an expedition to test this prediction. During an especially long total solar eclipse in 1919, the Sun would sit in front of the Hyades cluster. This meant that at totality, many stars would be visible near the eclipse disk. He recorded star positions related to the Sun on a photographic plate and then compared them to the reference plates showing the stars when the Sun was nowhere near the field of view. He noticed that the light from the background stars shifted ever so slightly closer to the Sun when compared to the pictures of the same background stars that were taken earlier. They shifted exactly by the amount predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. This phenomena came to be known as gravitational lensing, where light from a background object is bent or distorted due to gravity of a foreground object. This can produce some bizarre looking images in deep space. For example, what you see here is the lensed image of a distant spiral galaxy being distorted by the gravity of the foreground cluster of elliptical galaxies, known as Abel 3827. The background spiral galaxy, along with its bright yellow central bulge, appears in nearly four separate locations. As the light from the background galaxy passes through the space around the cluster, it takes multiple paths through complex gravity of the cluster. Just like a single distant light can take multiple paths through the stem of a wine glass. Studying how clusters like Abel 3827 and their component galaxies deflect distant light gives us clues about how mass and dark matter are distributed around these clusters. Abel 3827 is so distant, having a redshift of 0.1, that the light we see from it left 1.3 billion years ago, that is, even before dinosaurs roamed on the Earth the cluster's central galaxies surely would have coalesced into one huge elliptical galaxy by now. Gravitational lensing is by no means a rare phenomena. You get an even more bizarre looking object when a point source of light passes through a massive galaxy or a galaxy cluster, like in this picture. What you see here is a distant quasar, which is the central region around an actively feeding supermassive black hole of a distant galaxy. Instead of taking a straight path, the light gets bent around the galaxy and we see four instances of it. This is known as Einstein's cross. Gravitational lensing also happens on a smaller scale, called microlensing. Here we look for bending of background starlight as it passes through the gravitational field of a foreground star. This phenomena has helped astronomers detect planets around very distant stars. They do this by looking for imperfections in the way light is bent as it passes through the gravitational field of a foreground star, which hints at the presence of another object near the foreground star, which is usually a planet. More than halfway across the universe, an enormous blue star nicknamed Lazarus is the furthest individual star ever seen, thanks to gravitational lensing. Normally, it would be much too faint to view, even with the world's best telescopes. But due to gravitational lensing that tremendously amplifies the star's feeble glow, astronomers using the Hubble Space Telescope were able to pinpoint this faraway star and set a new distance record. The star, harbored in a very distant spiral galaxy, is so far that it has taken light 9 billion years to reach Earth. It appears to us as it did when the universe was about 30% of its current age. It is intriguing to know that gravity that keeps us glued down to the Earth is also responsible for these bizarre optical illusions that we see in deep space. Unlike the other three fundamental forces, gravity is something we experience every single second of our lives. Yet, we have no clue how it originates. We know that it originates at the level of subatomic particles, but how exactly, we are yet to determine. 
I often get asked what more is there to be discovered in science? Don't we already know almost everything? Aren't the most important discoveries already done? What more could be discovered? The fact that we are yet to uncover the workings of gravity itself should be proof enough that no, we do not know everything. In fact, there are a plethora of unexplained phenomena like dark matter and dark energy. For all that we know, finding answers to these questions will only leave us with more unanswered questions. But isn't that the beauty of science feeding mankind's ever-increasing thirst to know more?